This week's coffee is going to be El Salvador San Jose Red Bull Bomb. Welcome to episode 153, my name is Steve Layton and as I said at the beginning this week's going to be all about El Salvador San Jose Red Bull Bomb. Now this is the time to pull up a chair, perhaps go and make a coffee, put me on pause because this is going to be not a short one, uh, hopefully it won't be too long but I don't think it's going to be a short one. So as the title suggests the varietal is a Bourbon um, and one of my kind of earliest coffee memories of how a varietal can influence a cup um, was from Bourbon and um, yeah it, it's, a, it's a varietal that's always kind of interested me a lot. Um, originates from Ethiopia the, uh, which is of course the only indigenous place that coffee grows. This varietal is a heirloom varietal um, it has lots of sub varietals that go along with it but an heirloom varietal is basically grown from seeds that have been passed down the generations not from cross pollinating or not from, uh, for instance, a hybrid program or, or, or anything like that. So this is a heirloom, uh, can be traced back in, in, in most coffees. So um, very close links to things like SL28, Tipica, Katura. Um, but as I said, you can pretty much, if you look hard enough, uh, you'll find it in uh, pretty much most, most strains of coffee. So um, it's a very low yielding. Um, so not great for the producer uh, coffee, but tends to have a much higher cup quality than you you know in general. And this is a very broad brush that I'm painting with here, but kind of find that if a plant has a low yield, it kind of concentrates its energy into the cherries um, that it that it's growing. So um, I kind of like the idea that this is a, a a low yielder. I know lots of producers don't like that, but tends to give a much better cup profile. Um, Problems of growing it is one, uh, it's not very pest resistant, uh, the pests love it, um, at risk of disease um, and as I've already said decidedly average in its yield. But I think the rewards can be great from this coffee. Um, it's interesting that uh, you know kind of some of my greatest moments in, in coffee tasting have come from, from, from this varietal. Um, interesting fact that the yellow bourbon tends to produce a higher yield than the orange and the red which is the red is the most prevalent um, kind of a bit ironic that it's the most prevalent but the, the yellow is the least uh, but has a higher yield um, this is one of our direct trade coffees and the photos that you're seeing on the screen now um, is from my visit to San Jose last February um, this is the very first year of working with this brand new farm for us um, and one that's a change uh, from how we normally find our producers, kind of normally find them through cup of excellence or through uh, you know knowing somebody on the ground. But you know th this one is owned by Gloria Mercedes Rodriguez Fontan. I knew I'd remember that one. Um, and I know her son-in-law, who is uh, Luis Rodriguez, uh, from a trip I had back in 2008. Luis used to work for the Conciejo in El Salvador which is kind of like the organizing committee for specialty growers um, in El Salvador and became great friends with Lewis and we've exchanged emails for quite a long time since then uh, and because I was arranging my trip this year to go to El Salvador um, you may remember me talking about this on with the La Luzia one a couple of weeks ago I emailed Lewis and said you know would he be able to kind of help me and, 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 and kind of look after me he was like yeah of course I will so um, he whistled stopped me around the region, uh, we cooked like crazy, um, we stopped at Gloria's amazing house uh, during the time there but not with the intention of buying San Jose, um, it was to look at some other farms that Lewis had started working with but um, we set up a cupping table in Gloria's living room and it was a rickety old pasting table and we started to cup all of the samples and Lewis had dropped a couple of these San Jose's in there and Three of the cupping samples jumped off the table at me of amazing quality. Uh, one was this one, the red bourbon. One was um, the orange and yellow bourbon mix one um, that 
I'll, I'll tell you about it in a second. And another one which one called uh, Elefante. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do for those ones, because we run the risk of making this turn into the longest ever in my mug, is I'll do an audio boo on them later on in the week. So keep an eye on audio boo for, if you don't know what audio boo, link somewhere. I don't know where to put the links. Uh, but we'll, we'll put a link somewhere um, uh, on these, these smaller lots. But the red is a much larger lot, uh, and that's why we're doing it on in my mug. So let's talk about the farm. Uh, the farm, obviously, Finca San Jose, has been in the Rodriguez family for five generations, uh, beginning back in 1815, I hope I've got that date wrong, where Jose Maria Rodriguez and Josefina Rodriguez uh, planted the first coffee on the farm. I've memorised these names like crazy, it's killing me. Um, and uh, has been, say, in the family for five generations. The New Estonia, Gloria, um, has, uh, has been on the farm for, for, for quite a while, but she also owns five other farms uh, in the near, nearby area, um, which I think gives her a total of 38 hectares of coffee, so she has a really good um, uh, kind of, it's quite a large amount of land really for El Salvador. Um, the farm has been awarded uh, in Cup of Excellence in 2007 and 2009, um, and I, I had heard about this coffee previously and I had cupped it in Cup of Excellence samples. Um, it was not a brand new one to me in my head when I'd heard about it. Uh, and also came fourth this year in the Coffee of the Year event that the SCAA, Specialty Coffee Association of America, um, hold every year. And uh, very exciting for them and very exciting that we've got this coffee. Um, the farm is on a mountain volcano slope and uh, Gloria is very keen on looking after the environment, um, the fauna, the, the animals on the farm. Um, like a lot of producers that I've met, she was very keen to show me all of the, the plant and, and, and also the, um, uh, the wildlife on the farm. Um, and she's very keen to look after that. Um, it's on the northwest slope of an extinct volcano crater. Uh, I'm actually going to show you some uh, video footage now. Um, this is a link that somebody sent to me today, uh, not today, this week, and uh, it's of a neighbouring village to, to, the, to, to here, uh, uh, Halpa, um, and they have a, a, a fire throwing kind of celebration as you can see here. Um, completely unrelated and completely useless and, 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 and but I, I spent this clip and I thought this is a bit of a coincidence I'm, I'm doing this one this week so I thought I would share that with you ripped off a, uh, the Telegraph's website so um, so San Jose has 17 full-time workers on the farm um, and 60 seasonal workers when the harvest time is going uh, and Gloria again as well as looking after the environment likes to look after the people who work on the farm with the people who are there full-time receiving 10% above the, 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 the normal wage that they would get in the country. Um, and the pickers, she pays incredibly well, uh, up to 50% more, um, because she sees it as a very important task you know, at the end of the year to bring that together. Um, she also has a great farm manager who is called Antonio, and he runs the day-to-day -day stuff on the farm and, and really looks after all of the nitty-gritty stuff and all of the employees. Um, altitude of 1500 metres above sea level, uh, mainly Bourbon Verata with a little bit of this Elefante uh, mixed in. Um, the nearest town to the farm is called Canton, which is in Apaneca, which is the Arshapan region of El Salvador. Um, oh, actually on the farm as well, I think they've got a little bit of Tipica as well, which is, uh, you, you kind of find, find, you know, farms end up with lots of different plants. Um, and yeah, that, that's pretty much the farm. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to tell you about. Um, no, I don't think so. So it's, uh, it's time that we get our snozzers in the bowl. So snozz are in there and the first thing you get is you get really hit with the real sweetness. Now I know a few of you have emailed me and said that, um, how do you smell sweetness? Surely you can't, but that's sweetness right in there. Think kind of candy floss mixed in with some sugars and some just a beautiful, beautiful aroma coming off there. Uh, really amazing uh, aromas and a coffee that is made for snozzer in the bowl. So before we go and taste the coffee, it's time for us to wheel out the wheel of death. Which way? That way? I never know which way it is. I've got to get used to this. So time for the wheel of death. And this, this week it is. 
The Clever Dripper. Now, the Clever Dripper is a brewer that um, I've not really used apart from on in my mug, which is kind of uh, um, a good place to be using it again, I suppose. Um, the last one I did, you may remember on in my mug, was a little bit naff. So uh, I kind of hope that I nail this one a bit better because uh, I am really looking forward to tasting this coffee as, as brewed. I was kind of quite relieved when I uh, random generated it and saw that it was this one and not like, you know, Americano or anything like that. So um, the best thing about the Clever Dripper is that it combines all the best parts of the French press with all the best parts of the filter brewing. So the theory is it should be brilliant. Um, we are going to be stocking them very, very soon uh, and they will be on the site, but not yet. But if you want one before then, then you can win a brand new one boxed with filters or should I say win rather than, I think I should say swap. Because what I'd like you to do is to enter the competition to win this, you have to go to inmymug.com, leave a comment under this week's one, and the rule is you have to offer something to swap for a Clever Dripper and for a pack of filters. Um, think of it like Noel Edmonds Swap Shop, but without Noel Edmonds. Um, instead you get me. Um, so I would like comments about the coffee and I would like you to offer something to swap. Uh, in true has-been style, I'm guessing weirder the better will probably win. Um, so yeah, go and do that on the comments. But um, here goes with the espresso first. So Now this tells me everything that is great about El Salvador and particularly Bourbon in El Salvador. I'm going to get my big broad brush of generalisation out. but. The two mixed together tend to make great espresso. Um, there's a lot of reason why El Salvador has so much Bourbon. And basically what happened in the late 80s, early 90s, while the rest of the world were ripping out their Bourbon because it was low yielding and they wanted higher yields because coffee prices had plummeted, El Salvador was in civil war and it was fighting each other. So basically they weren't ripping out the stock. By the time the uh, civil war had finished, um, Bourbon was starting to be recognised as being this great varietal, um, and 70% say of the varietal, uh, the, the, uh, the varietals in El Salvador are Bourbon. So this coffee, super sweet. I mean, really, really sweet. Full of cherries. A great espresso. Not just good, a great espresso. In fact, probably one of the best espressos I've had in a long while. Um, yeah, it really has been amazing to get that sweetness and those beautiful flavours coming through. So time for the Clever Dripper. I'm just going to pop it on there. So what I've done is I've used 80 grams per litre. I've used a super coarse grind, like really gritty. And it's been there for around about four minutes. Um, it's now draining through very, very quickly because it was so coarse, but it's been sitting in there um, for a little while. So see, it's gone through that quick. There's just a little bit going through. So I've poured it into the Chemex. So for all those who said, um, how long have the drinks been sitting there uh, in the comments? Well, basically, because of my clever video editing, you don't see the join. But I actually dive off when the cup thing comes up. I dive off to make these. So I'm being clever. Not. But um, so dive into this one. Ooh. Now you're getting that cherry that I was tasting on the espresso is big time in this. See, this is what I like about this Clever Dripper. It's like cherry cola. It's like cherry cola on steroids with a whole heap of sugar mixed in with it too. It is so sweet. The cherry is amazing. I've nailed that one. I mean, that is that's probably the best Clever Dripper I think I've ever made. But then this coffee is so easy to pour great coffee with. I have yet to do something where I've thought, oh, that wasn't very good. Or, oh, I could have done that better. Every time I've played with it, I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's a stellar, stellar coffee. So. I really like it. Um, do keep an eye out for the audio booze next week on the, uh, the, the other two varietals, well, colours and varietals we have. Um, they are in incredibly short supply. They are very small micro lots. This one is 50% uh, of the crop from the farm we've bought. So the other 50% I think goes to the States. And then we have 100% uh, of the orange yellow one and 100% of this Elefante, which is a fairly new one. And they are currently planting lots of the seeds to, in the nursery so they can have more for coming years. And we, we think this is going to be a fairly big coffee for us in the, in the future. Anyway, um, 
Time to wrap up. Thank you very much for joining me. Sorry it's been a little bit of a long one. And do remember, life is too short for bad coffee.